got some stuff for you from Banyan Imports. Sure. Um, I'm hoping to be there in about a half an hour. I'm kind of stuck at a place right now waiting to get loaded. Okay. Um, but they said it's only going to be 20 minutes, so I don't know. I should probably be there in less than 45 minutes. Okay. Yep, I'll be here. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Bye. All right, so you probably didn't catch the first part of that conversation, but let me fix the view here. But that was Dan with Roadrunner Transport. Um, I am, t today I am receiving uh, delivery of a large, cheap Chinese laser cutter. Um, I'll try to put a picture in here. Um, this video is going to serve a couple purposes. The first of which is to document um, this particular laser cutter. Uh, receiving it, uh, hopefully setting it up and finding out um, what it is and isn't capable of and what and how close to expectations and promises it ends up being. I am shooting this also to to uh, get better at documenting things. So I'll try not to stumble through too much but uh, but yeah so the laser that's coming is a it's the big red one it's a 60 watt um, red sail clone, a clone of the X700 um, from what I understand, the authentic red sales are only sold through a, a seller online called CNC Cheap, um, and then they come directly from China. Uh, the reason I went ahead and got a clone, even though a lot of people are saying that the, the authentic red sales have higher, some higher quality components in them, is because um, a number of things. One of them is impatience. I can get this one a lot quicker since it's shipping from some, you know, one of their one of the sellers' warehouses in uh, the U.S. Um, but also because the uh, importing process seemed a little daunting to me. Um, it sounded like it was going to be uh, a lot of effort to... Oh, meet Dexter. World's most talkative cat. By talkative, I mean com complainy. Um, but basically, the yeah, the the, the process of, of getting a, a customer's broker to handle the shipment and then waiting for them to sit for the actual uh, shipment to be uh, dispatched because you know they might have to build it and um, and then now with the, the new tariffs that the Trump administration enforced there's actually as far as I can tell there'd be a 25 to 35 percent tariff tacked on top of all that so I just figured I'm I already plan on replacing some of the components in this down the road like I'm going to use it as it is for a while unless it's you know unless it's absolutely terrible um, and then I ultimately for sure plan on replacing the power supply and the uh, the tube with actually properly rated tubes from Reese probably through Light Object um, which would be about a thousand dollar upgrade I paid about two I mean two thousand dollars for this unit shipped. Um, so the other laser I chose not to get was the actual 80 watt, the same exact laser, but in the 80 watt or 100 watt version, um, because as far as I can tell, the tubes they ship with are crap anyways. So I might as well just upgrade the tube myself, save five, six, seven hundred dollars now, um, and then just put that towards proper tube and proper power supply down the road. Um, so yeah, and as far as I can tell, there are two different versions of this clone on eBay currently. I think maybe this newer version was released within the past year or so, and you can tell the difference because uh, I'll try, try to show a picture of this as well. But the um, there is there's an extra door that flips down on the on the one, and the control panel configuration is a little bit different on the newer one. Um, it looks like this one allows pass the new one allows pass through of materials so you can fit larger stock through. It just seemed like there's overall build improvements like they might have learned from some mistakes on the first one. Um, but I'm pretty hopeful that things are going to be all right. Um, my one of my, the main things I'm concerned about is going to be the the linear rails for the ways for the X and Y ways. Um, they look like they might be knockoffs of the Taiwan high wind rails because those ones have a particular color combination to them and it looks like these do well, but I doubt they're the authentic ones. Um, because what that's the, that was the hard thing about going with this route is because I was communicating with um, a, G, a G Wikey representative for a while and before deciding to ultimately go this route, and that was one of their upsell or one of their selling points is that they use the higher quality rails and you know a number of other things. The build quality seemed a little bit better, so I guess we'll see. I'm I'm I'm, I'm hopeful, but I'm also expecting that there's going to be a little bit of uh, uh, hacking necessary to get this thing up to full snuff. Um, so I'm replacing my. Uh, full spectrum 40 40 watt laser uh, because it's small and I have been having some issues with it lately I mean you know, having to replace the power supply and whatnot and uh, ultimately I just 
for the price, I feel like it's worth the, worth risking, you know, some downtime and getting this guy set up. Um, the full spectrum's been working, but I it's just the company in general just kind of irks me in terms of like the 40 watt is not actually 40 watt. I think it's either a 30, maybe a 35. Um, and they claim that they use some special magic pink dust and oh, that's what makes it more powerful. Um, I don't think so. Uh, so that's going to be another part of the process today is making room for this laser because my current setup, which I will share with you here, is um, going to be a lot different than what it's going to need to be. So I'll follow you up in my garage here. So I've gotten to this upstairs area. on a nice heavy duty 1950s table uh, bench here with really heavy duty drawers and a, it's got a cool pull out table here that I could do some work on. It's got this nice middle drawer that I put all my small stuff in. So I'm really gonna miss that because this new laser is gonna take up pretty much this entire space. I'm not gonna have room for this entire setup anymore. The other cool thing was it had the outlets along the side. I got the PC there. The uh, touchscreen monitor on the neck here. This is all salvaged stuff, the PC and the touchscreen. Um, then I've got my water coolant set up up here in a uh, cat or dog food container, which keeps it semi-sealed. It's blue, because this time around I'm using uh, antifreeze. And antifreeze and distilled water. You definitely don't want any uh, micro microbial growth going on in your tank. Um, and then we got it vented out the side of the garage here. Um, so yeah, well this one, this one definitely has the uh, upper hand in terms of size. The one that's coming apparently is 300 pounds and uh, very large. It's about four feet wide. I think it's about the size of this space. So I'll have to come up with a way to do the transition because I'm going to still need a working laser. Because if this one comes and it's not working that well, I'm still going to need to be able to use this. So I may have to leave this here, set up the new one, like maybe over here temporarily. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. I'll get it up over here because there's a good amount of space up here. But that's it for now. So I'll keep going uh, when the truck arrives. Time for the big reveal. There it is. It's actually not as big as I was expecting. Especially considering whatever's in there is going to be smaller than that. But still pretty big considering I have to get it up there. So I have a friend coming hopefully today, hopefully in a little bit, to uh, help me get it up there. But I'm not gonna wait for him to unbox it, so I gotta find out if I have the appropriate tools to crack into this thing. I have a bad feeling about this. This is my only curl bar, pry bar, whatever. I'm gonna have to bust out some flat heads and a hammer. Well, I'll take that approach. So now it's starting to get interesting. Got the top off. I'm trying to do this in the least uh, messy way, you know, I don't need to take all six panels off or whatever and have those separate quite yet I'd rather just you know like I did to take the top off here and not pull the front off because I can pull everything off the front I'm thinking but we'll see what happens Maybe heavier than it looks but as you can see we're starting to see some red here Things are getting interesting There's that There's the uh, The all too common looking blue tube there for the big reveal. Ah! Ooh. I already got a good feeling about this. Shininess levels are through the roof. I have to tilt my angle down a little bit here. So I don't have to tilt my head quite as much. Okay. Wow. I want to get a feel for kind of like overall panel quality. I know that's one of the ways in which they're gonna probably be trying to skimp a little, but hoping it wasn't too bad. D 
Dear customer, thank you for choosing our product. We are dedicated to providing high quality products, to providing high quality products and excellent service to all our customers. If you're satisfied with your product and your service, we would greatly appreciate it if you would take a minute to leave positive feedback for us. This can help us improve your, the, this can help us more than you can imagine. However, if you're not satisfied with any part of your purchase, we ask you to give us the opportunity to resolve the issue before opening a claim, leave me negative feedback or delaying your return. Contact us first will make things much quicker. Thanks a lot for buying with us. Well, it actually feels pretty sturdy. Can we get in? Oh, we can get in. Oh, wait. Oh, something's catching. What is it? Oh, oh, the keys were hanging up. Oh, that is some greasy stuff right there. So, there we go. All right, so again, this is my first time using this head cam uh, that I've made out of a construction helmet and some screws. Uh, it's just really tricky to get the angle right because the camera's not centered on my eyes and it depends on where my head is tilted and not where my eyes are looking. It's, I can't see the screen. So forgive me if I think I'm showing you something and you can't actually see it, okay? Because I'm trying to get the angle right and it's, it's proving to be pretty difficult. So we'll just hope that hope for the best. So far, I haven't gone that deep, but so far, everything's looking okay. And I'm actually having a hard time er, experiencing my excitement because I'm filming it and I'm thinking about how to film it instead of actually taking it all in. Um, there's a lot to take in. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of try to draw attention to a couple of things I've noticed already. Like the first thing here, like this panel looks a little bunged up. If you look, if you can see in this corner here, the paint's kind of worn off. Um, these guys are kind of cheap feeling, little spring dingers. Yeah, it's like they'll be all right though. Um, got some, collected some dust. Um, I don't see any, so far I don't see any real damage though. Looks like this part's locked. So you use the key that's included there to open that. Maybe I can, I should've put this on wheels. I actually wish I had had him set it on some sort of a wheelie thing so I could manipulate it around. Moving it. I figure it's gonna be kind of a pain. That's okay. Now we got the one light there. Okay. So what are we gonna do here? Um, I mean, the actual setup of it looks like it's gonna be pretty simple. Pull the crap out, um, take the uh, window off and remove the film, uh, tie, untie any strappy things they've got to keep it held in place during shipment, um, get it out of this crate. I'm gonna spare you a lot of that stuff because that's not really like, exciting. What I'm really want you to see is the stuff that I felt like was not being shown on the listing, nor um, and the couple of videos I found of this model online, which is the, uh, the close-up kind of like quality of things and how it all looks up close. Um, I'm looking at the platform, it looks like some pretty beefy screws. Uh, it looks a lot less hollow and flimsy than I was expecting. So I'm very pleased about that because that was the one thing I thought I'd be getting if I got a G Wikey. It's just like build quality, but I mean, this thing looks well thought out. So, I noticed that the my control panel's got a little scuff on it already, unless this has a removable film. Ooh, wait, I think it does, it does. I'll save that for later then. So, a couple of things here. So I just realized why all the paint here is scratched off. It's because this, uh, whatever, the door, the window, what the hell would you call this, the lid, was a little bit out of alignment um, this away. And it was scraping along that edge. And it still is a little bit. You can see there's a good amount of gap here. The, uh, the precision levels here are not that great um, with the sheet metal bending. Um, so that's okay, but yeah, and there's no, there's no uh, like weather seal or air seal around the door either to help direct the airflow to be going through these um, vents here. So that so when it closes, you get a real, you know, you get a real fat drop. You don't get a nice gentle drop when it closes either. Another thing I noticed well, in here is that so the Z axis adjustment is this guy here, and mother of hell is that a pain to turn? It's taking a lot more effort to turn than I would like. So this is me lifting it. You can see it turns all four screws. Uh, grab the key so you can see the belt moving underneath. It links all the four sides together. You see that belt? 
Did we turn the belt? And that's how she works. But one thing I just had an issue with in the process of turning this horrible knob, I mean, it's really roughly machined out of like some second class brass. Um, the rail here is such a sharp edge on it that I was turning this, I wasn't paying attention, my finger slid on that rail and got gouged open. It's not got a bloody finger. Um, so I'm either going to have to shave that edge down so that that doesn't happen again, or I don't know, I, maybe I will add like a, a Z motor for the adjustment there, or maybe a better knob, I don't know, but adjusting this kind of sucks right now. I know generally focusing on stuff is only going to be, need to be moved very ever so slightly because the thicknesses that I'm going to be working with, I'm not really etching a lot of large items, but um, uh, the Z axis is definitely an area where they cheaped out and kind of sucks a little bit, but... I like these sensors, they look like decent quality Hall Effect sensors instead of the uh, rocker switch end stops. Um, so we'll see how well those work. And the ways. It feels okay. I guess I don't really know what to, I don't have anything to compare it to, so I don't know if they're decent quality or not. I mean, they don't, it's not like floating on a cloud. There's definitely a good amount of resistance, so. I don't know if that's in the stepper motors or if that's the rail or what, but I guess we'll see. Because that's really gonna, if that is if that is crap, that's really gonna show in the engraving. And because every little bump that it hits on when it's rolling is gonna create a oscillation in the in the linear path of the laser. So we'll be able to tell in etching if those are really shit. Okay, I just figured something out about the Z Z axis. Um. So I opened up the door down here again, and I noticed that on the lead screws, there's a lot of grease just caked on there. You'll notice they just kind of wiped it on and didn't really, you know, you travel the axes. So that grease hadn't been distributed through the uh, through the threads of the Z axis. And instead of sitting here like an idiot, turning this back and forth effortlessly, I just decided to grab the belt here and start just aggressively moving the Z axis up and down throughout the whole travel of those screws. So I'm forcing the grease to distribute throughout by doing this. And that's a nice quick way of getting the job done. And I may even use this long term as a Z adjust method because it's so much quicker than turning that screw. Um, but now that I've done that and distributed the grease, Adjusting this knob isn't as bad as it was, so it was worth it. All right, so it looks like my hopes of keeping this box intact and getting the laser out might have been foiled. So I'm trying to figure out why when I pull on this thing, it's not shifting at all. I mean, I figured it was gonna be strapped down in some way, but I couldn't figure out what it was. So I tried, looked and it looked like the wheels weren't making contact with the ground. So maybe, you know, they needed to twist the, uh, the feet up. Can't twist the feet. Why can't I twist the feet? Looks like in each foot they've driven a bolt down into the pallet. So I need to get the sides off in order to, be able to access those. Unless I just want to drill a hand size hole, but I think it'd be quicker to just rip the panels off. Um, I think it was kind of odd they drilled right into the feet, you know, these metal sealed things, and then and as a means of attaching it to the crate. But whatever it is, it is. Uh, I also found these two bolts just floating around, so hopefully those aren't necessary. All right, so I'm gonna take those out and try to get it out of the box because also there's a box, a cardboard box underneath. I think that's gonna be a bit of a challenge. The other video I watched on YouTube with a guy trying to get that box out from underneath was pretty entertaining. So hopefully I'm not equally as uh, um, fun to watch. Now that I've got the sides off, we can see some more beauty, beauty shots, different angles here. So you can see the side, all inputs and power switches. Uh, looks like that's a cooling fan for the side here. I'm excited to pop that open. I'm most excited, of course, to see the tube itself back here. Pray that it doesn't have any cracks in it, because that'll be fun. That works well enough. That'll do. Pig. This impact wrench has been one of the best decisions I've ever made. I'm picking up one of those, highly recommended. Okay, so now that we've got those out, I feel like I can move on to some less productive looking. Let's take a look inside 
these panels here. I guess I like that there's keys involved. I don't know. I'm not trying to keep anybody out. Oh, that looks pretty clean. Pretty clean. Wiring fan. Not sure. Distribution box lock. All for power going somewhere. It's going down. Where the hell is that going? Oh, it's going into this. And it's going over. Okay. Got the controller. With all the stepper signals coming out to the stepper drivers themselves, just the two. Gosh, if I want to get a third in here, do OZ. Might be kind of tight. Hopefully these are decent quality. Power supply, what is that, 12 volts? I don't know. I don't know what, oh, a bunch of different voltages, looks like. Oh no, this is the, is this the, no, I don't know what that is. Yeah, a bunch of random voltages. And the high, high power, actually high, high voltage laser supply here. In the back. This wiring looks like it's okay gauge. A lot of people complain that this wiring was absolute crap, but I think they may have cleaned up their act on this revision. Looks like we can get towards the back now too. I can pop this side panel off. Might as well take a look inside of this door too. Oh, I see. So you can get at it and do the alignment from the side here. That's pretty cool. Cables seem to be really well managed. It makes me happy. I'm happy to see. Big fat exhaust socket. Good lord. Smoke outlet. I think after I took those screws off, it should be pretty mobile. Oh, that's where those bolts came from. This wheel's about to come off. Oh, I put those back in. <laughs> I mean, how much profit could there possibly be in this? For $2,000 it got from here to China, from China to here, um, to my door, you know, $150 of that was the lift gate service. You know, you pay $1,800 for it, but then you gotta pay another $150 to get it actually to a residential address with lift gate. Unless you happen to have a, a loading dock at your house. So let's take a look at the laser tube. Oh god. Oh no. Oh, it's tape. Oh, I saw some weird reflections, but that is a crummy looking tube. All the nice ones that I've seen have had like a metal aperture. Um, but, you know, it's longer than my 40 watt. So, what's it say here? A thousand something. I'm guessing, yeah. So, what I've seen reported is that the one they ship it with is claimed to be a 60, but it's actually maybe a 50. It's definitely not a 40. It's way too big to be a 40, as far as I know. Um, so, we'll see how well this performs. I'm hoping I can get a few months out of it before I have to drop the thousand dollars and get an upgrade. Um, oh, we got another little door back here. Oh yeah, this would be the, the rear pass-through, if that is indeed a thing. Oh, I got our air inlet, anodized beautifully. Water inlet and outlet. Uh, the outlet patch on here looks a lot higher quality than it did on the previous models that I was seeing on eBay. Get this door out. No, not very, not a very good fit. Come on. There we go. Now we can see through the back. Oh, it looks like some of our cable management fell off. Couldn't squeeze that back up for good measure. Yeah, I must have ran water through it and tested it before they shipped it because I felt a little wetness when I was unpacking it. You can see the back here at the idler pulley. I imagine that there's some accommodations for powering this. I don't know where you put the motor. I mean, I, I guess you would could put it here as sort of an idler, but I don't see any like mounting holes yet for it under here. All right, so I've yet to actually power the thing on yet. I'm trying to decide what order to do things in here. And I'm gonna hold off on powering it on until John gets here, because that's an exciting moment. It's, uh, in this journey. Um, so far, still no regrets. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Hasn't cut a single thing yet, but I love it. I'm in love. Um, so let's 
I hear a car approaching. And it, oh, it's Elizabeth. Okay, so I'm just gonna go over some of the accessories that came with it here. Most of them are really cheesy, but ultimately I'm glad they included things instead of not. Some bands. Hey, babe. Hi. Look at you. Look at look at them. Who is it? Whoever wants to watch this. Oh. Got a crappy little water pump. I think mine's better than this. This one actually feels heavier than mine, so maybe this would be better. Um, some tubing, an air compressor pump. The ubiquitous massive blue tube for ventilation and exhaust. Sorry, not ventilation, yeah, I'm pretty much exhaust. Um, and a, here's the blower that it came with, which from what I can tell is gonna be really loud Possibly move a lot of air, but be really loud, and then eventually start on fire. So, to make a call on whether or not to implement that. Because the one I've got, I'm pretty happy with, but I don't know. Maybe with the larger cavity, I need to move more air. I don't know, I'll have to experiment with that. And then we got this little doctor's bag, which I love. This is the coolest bag. Zippered, ruggedized. Let's see what's inside. I'm just hoping there's a power cord. Oh, Ethernet cable. USB. Cable, just be A on both ends. That's interesting. Ooh, Allen key set. Very nice, very nice. New generation package silicone adhesive sealant. Silicone goo. Orion Motor Tech. Software, probably RD works. There's our power cord. Might as well use it. And some tape, mounting tape, I think maybe. Looks like double sided. Not sure what that's gonna be for. And then a user manual, there actually is one. I'm told that this is useless, but let's take a look. Thank you for buying our products. Our machine is professional and high technology equipment combined with the optical, mechanical, and electrical. Here, especially edit this manual for your good operating and maintenance. We also take many real object photographs in the manual. It helpfully introduces installation and adjustment, maintenance, safety, attention, etc. in details. The user should read this manual in details before using because it will help you have a good grasp of operating and maintenance. Cool. Some software, some alignment uh, debriefing. Cool. Noticed another couple of cool things here. Um, in a minute, I'm going to power it on, show you what the startup sequence looks like. Um, but uh, on the panels, well, first of all, on the inside here, you'll see there's a disconnectable, there's a connector here that would allow you to disconnect the Y axis and replace it with a, a rotary table. So that's, it's already got facilitations for, it's already ha is facilitating for that, and I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and all of these panels, except for this one, because it's got hinges, but they have, all the side panels have these, let's see if I can get the brightness up, have, um, these little spring-loaded latch at the bottom of them that you can, if you, here, right here, you can pull this latch on both sides and remove the whole panel. I thought that was pretty cool. That was a tool-free removal process. It just slots into these little pinholes in the side, either side. And all of the panels, all the major panels have that. That's kind of a cool feature. So let's go ahead and power on here. So you can see what the power on sequence looks like. Hit the power switch on the side here that says control switch. The light's there. It's homing. See, we got LED lights in the back now. It's another feature of this newer one. The old ones had a compact fluorescent in the back. Or not a compact fluorescent, a fluorescent tube. In the control panel, which is a uh, Ruida-based control panel, it does have a color screen. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, you can see how fast the jog moves are by default. One of the things I was a little bit bummed to find out is that the laser pointer is not implemented with a beam combiner. On the full spectrum and a lot of nicer lasers, they have a beam combiner 
uh, back where the laser is, which makes it a lot easier to align the beam um, to the individual mirrors because you can you can just align it with the laser and then just use the red light for pretty much everything. In this case now I have to, because you'll notice, look, it's way over here, but you know, as I raise my hand, it gets closer to the middle. So because it's at an angle, you know, it's not coming out where the laser is, it's, I'm gonna have to adjust that separate to make sure that the red dot's showing up where the, where the beam is actually hitting. So it's really only helpful for work placement. It's not really gonna be helpful for aligning the beam. Um, at least it's there, so I'm not gonna totally complain about it. Um, another cool thing about this one um, is that it comes with the honeycomb as well as blades in the bottom here. I uh, I can see them, but I'm not entirely sure how this is attached. I have a feeling it's these four, one, two, three, four screws I'm seeing around the perimeter um, to remove the honeycomb. But the sucky part about that is there's nuts on the bottom side. So removing and reattaching the honeycomb, it's actually going to be kind of a pain in the ass and it's not something you want to do often. So I want to get at those blades and see them, um, and possibly use them occasionally. Um, I've always used the honeycomb on the full spectrum and it's been, it's been fine, but I've always wondered what, you know, how much nicer it might be for, for cutting to not have to worry about the, the back flash on the on like acrylics and whatnot if you're not using the protective film. So I want to use that blade, but I have to, might have to devise a quicker change out method for the honeycomb there. Um, I've removed the panels entirely, set them aside because uh, I'm going to be moving this up the stairs soon and figured I'll save the reattachment of those for then. Let's just do one more quick walk around here that powered on. Here's what it looks like powered on on the inside. Got one constant light and one blinking light on the controller. But so far everything seems to be working okay. I have yet to fire the laser. But I'll save that for once I've got the water hooked up and everything. So I've got a temporary life support set up here. Start taken from the laser upstairs. And uh, let's see if I can find that key. Okay. So I'm gonna use the air pump it came with. It doesn't actually seem all that different from the one that I have, even though the one that I have I thought was higher quality. Um, right now it's just sitting here on a block of foam to help reduce the vibrations, because the less vibrations going into the machine, the better. Um, but I don't know why they didn't really facilitate the install here in the first place, because that just like makes sense as a place to put it. Um, but it is a little noisy, but with the foam it helps quite a bit. Um, I've added a couple uh, little adhesive foam insulation strips in different places where it's the metal's just clanging together to help just soften the the interaction a little bit. Biggest most important one are these here. Uh, because when this came down it was really clanging but now it's got a nice gentle relief. Um, notice that this strut here it is a kind of a loose thing, so you gotta be careful when you're raising it because it kind of wants to jiggle there. But uh, a little foam here as well, and I bent this sheet back into square a little bit, so that's better than it was. I was able to uh, determine that the honeycomb is removable, and those four screws were the culprits. They are like one and a, one and a half inch little M4 screws with nuts. And uh, getting them out was kind of a pain because they were like tapped in, poorly tapped into the different layers of metal on the way through. So I had to go through the back and through the, uh, through the back of the machine to get at those. And, uh, and now they're out and I can remove this. But um, I don't plan on reinstalling those screws, but I'll show you how this comes out. Kind of shift it out. Careful of the laser head. Um, and there it is. Thing weighs a good 20 pounds or so, so it's well made. Um, and underneath you'll see the... Uh, what are they calling these? The knife blade table. So these are all individually removable uh, aluminum extrusions. And now you can cut materials without having to worry as much about the flashback from the honeycomb. Um, so I plan long term to install a registration system where putting this in, it ends up in the same spot every time because now it's all loose. So I'm not putting those screws back in. Um, but since that's how I had it set up on the full spectrum for the longest time, it never really bothered me. That'll be fine for now, but, uh, but yeah. That's insane. I wasn't originally planning on getting all spec heavy on this, but John can't help himself. He's getting uh, real hot and bothered about these drivers. 
Wait a minute, where's the, why is it sucking up? There we go. There's more light in there. Um, what model stepper drivers are those, John? DM something? DM 545A. DM 545As. There's two of them. And because there's no motorized Z, but there seems to be enough of a gap in here that installing another one might not be too big of a deal. The controller definitely has the output for it. Um, the question is whether or not it's worth the effort because there doesn't seem to be a an actual predefined position for a Z motor. Uh, there's de definitely a lot of space for it, and it should be pretty trivial to just throw a pulley on it and get it in line with the belt. But it's already easy enough to move the 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 table up and down if you just grab onto the belt. But the fact that they use keys to get into the bottom is kind of annoying because then every time you'd want to do that, you have to get the keys out um, instead of just grabbing onto it. So I'll have to decide if that's worthwhile. But my small adjustments aren't too bad with the this crappy brass guy here. So I guess we'll see how much of a pain in the ass that is to have to deal with before making that change. Um, but John was commenting on how well they adhered to, they seem to have adhered to uh, wire coloring standards. The blue, the blue wires are all DC low voltage um, ground return, and then all the AC stuff in here seems to be. Well, I don't know if that is up to any sort of spec. Black and red. I guess that would it be black and white. Uh, black and red is used in commercial systems for AC. Yes. Yeah, okay. So then all the black and red in here, and they got a little like a bus bar almost, like a distribution block. Um, there for all the AC because it has to go from front to back. It's got the three um, universal sockets built into it. It's got the uh, water, the air, and then the um, uh, ex extraction fan. And that all comes on when you turn on the uh, control switch. So with the control panel, all three of those get flipped on as well. Um, so right now I've temporarily got the water system, the water uh, bucket from the laser upstairs hooked up. And I found out, oh yeah, so this is exciting. I'll have to remember this, but they use the, some of the flimsiest silicone tubing known to known to man. Just compare that to the stuff I had laying around. I mean, this stuff is thick and rigid. You'd be have a hard, hard pressed to get a, a kink in there. But they, this tubing is kinked throughout in here and then it, where it travels on, uh, through here there's like a little splitter in there for the water um, protect that um, there's a kink there so what, what you got PTG PTG tubing yes instead of the silicone yeah why uh, it's just more rigid and stands up to more coolants probably be worth the upgrade price probably a little more pricey huh? Um, not by much, but a little bit. About 30 cents a foot. It's gotta, I mean, I'll explain why they chose not to use it. They terminated it to the tube pretty nicely with the little sliver of um, silicone tubing and then they threw some silicone caulk in there. And then they zip tied the wire to the tube on both ends, so that's pretty cool. Um, John and I are in the process right now of throwing a temporary ammeter in line because it does not have any way of uh, reading out the amount of current you're drawing, the tube is drawing, which is really critical because since they're advertising this as a 60 watt, you might be thinking you can drive it at 100%, but I have a feeling that that's going to result in very short life of the tube. So uh, it'll be replaced soon, ideally, anyways, but I want to at least get some use out of it. Ah, but look at this. Is it? The light. Something happened to this in, in its life, and it's not on the surface, but can you see, we can see that there's like some etching almost, but it's not on either, either surface. It looks I mean, like air bubbles on the clan. inside. Yeah, it's like air bubbles in the acrylic. So that sucks so much for a window. It's also on this piece too. Is it? Yep. So I'll have to, that'll be one of the first things to cut with the laser is a square or a rectangle. And then the fil this film, this protective paper backing is so thin, it's impossible to remove without ripping. Which has never been the case with any of the acrylic I've bought. So they really, they must have cheaped out There's on also that. also imperfections here, you can actually feel the air bubbles. Really? Yeah, the large, look at the edge. Oh, that's, here. Yeah. Wow, they, this must be like reject plastic they get from some one of their suppliers, you know? Cause this is what everything sounds like currently. Hopefully it's well. It it's, uh, sounds good in the camera. Three, two, one. 
Hello? Can you hear me? Pretty dang loud. So this is what it looks like when you use grade F plastics. Alright, so some time has elapsed, a few weeks I think since I shot those last, the other parts of this video. And a lot has happened since then. Um, this is going to be my final wrap up. I'm going to do a pros and cons list of the lasers so far. And I'm going to tell you what has happened. So, this box should help explain the bulk of it. This massive, massive cardboard box. In there is the original tube from the machine. Because as you'll see, I've had to upgrade. So what happened was the machine was after it would raster, or after it did a scan job where it's uh, you know etching the surface of the acrylic or whatever. Um, immediately after that, it would fail to maintain a constant beam for for vector cutting. So after a bit of rastering, and these terminologies are coming from my use of the full spectrum, so excuse me, because I know they call it scanning and cutting on in the Rita software. Um, but yeah, after that, then the beam, it couldn't maintain a steady beam. Um, and it would only partially cut, way, cut through material. And I didn't know if it was the power supply or the laser um, at the time, and the support for the, the eBay seller, as expected, was not very helpful. Um, but I guess, uh, yeah, I, I shouldn't have been. I, I mean, I, did, I wasn't surprised. I, you know, again, I kind of anticipated that the tube was going to be crap. My guess is that they are offshoots, like uh, factory offshoots, like the basically stuff that's practically going to go in the garbage, and they probably buy them from for pennies on the dollar, and then you know sell them in in these boxes. And I think it's kind of a screw around because I'm happy to replace it because I've done it before. But if it, if I had been new to this, that would have been a really a uh, big shock to my system, but um, again, I'd already planned that. So, the in this box came an EFR 80 watt um, with a 95 watt peak, and um, I also replaced the power supply. Actually, I replaced the power supply for, first before replacing the tube with uh, another 40 watt compatible, 40 50 watt compatible power supply that I had laying around. Uh, where is that? in this bin here and that did not solve the problem so that helped me narrow it down to being the tube itself so here is the new power supply it is an EFR 80 watt power supply and I ordered that off of eBay it was about $200 shipped it was 150 of that was the item and the remaining 50 was the shipping it actually showed up in like two days the manufacturing date on this is um it's actually like four days before I uh, before I received it, so that was pretty crazy. And then here's the tube itself. Let's take a look at that. Let's see if I can get a better shot here with some light. Okay. So you'll see it's quite a bit longer than the last one. I'll get into that in a second. Um, a few things here for, with the install. I 3D printed some brackets that I found on Thingiverse you, as a parametric design. So you just type in the diameter of your tube and it uh, was a hot swap for this and it even matched up with their original mounting holes. That's really nice because they're very much very similar to the original style brackets. So I just used zip ties to uh, clamp those together instead of screws and screwed them down and those are pretty good. Um, alignment was pretty straightforward. Just kind of put it in and it just was pretty good out of the box. Um, this tube, I didn't have any other tube on hand, so I actually spliced this with an adhesive lined um, heat shrink as a temporary solution until I get a new tube, but it actually seems like it's going to hold up pretty well, so I'm kind of uh, happy about that. Um, zip tied the tube to the, the water line to the tube so it's not hanging out, and then built this extension. Uh, I couldn't find a proper swap out uh, extension box. There's already a panel here to remove and make room, but there's no extension box. So what I did was I bought these PVC fittings. This is a flange. This is you know this is like a, a drain flange, and then just a, a standard round drain, and then of course six-inch PVC tubing. Um, that's pretty much all it was to it. Cut this, cut a little bit out of the thing, and that was. I'm actually pretty quite proud of that because the other solutions I've seen were all um, acrylic boxes that I'm worried if you you know you bump into an acrylic box, it's a brittle plastic and. You'd have to be careful not to snap it off, and this thing is, you know, pretty dang sound. So I'm pretty happy about that. So let's go ahead and close this now. 
uh, the way I've got it set up here. So you'll notice I originally was getting, planning on getting rid of this table, but because of how short the machine is, I decided to just take the legs off and just put it right on top of the table as it is. Now I still have my drawers and whatnot. And I'm really digging that. And it also brings it up at a much better usable height. Because when you open this, before I was having to duck my head under the lid, and now not so much. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to kind of go through the list here. I made a list of pros and cons and uh, upgrades. So I'm going to go through my pros with this uh, Harbor Freight laser. Upgraded to a Milwaukee Fuel, as you can see here. So the thing's actually probably worth twice as much as I paid for already. Just, just right there. Um, but I, th I thought that was kind of a cool gag. Um, so yeah, so cons. Water lines came kinked. Prepare to replace the water lines with some thicker silicone tubing. The fan that it came with draws so much current. It's, I think it's more than your typical uh, even high, like 20 amp circuit. I believe it was instantaneously over 20 amps, and then it settled at around 7 amps. So the blower fan that it came with, I'm not using. I'm using my original kind of hydroponic fan here. And the blower fan still sits there because I'm not sure if I even, if I'm comfortable even using it without burning the house down. Um, definitely wasn't going to plug it into the back of here. Um, the, uh, speaking well, since we're, while we're back here, um, I have the power to the exhaust fan and the, and the air assist on one separate switch. So I can turn the laser on and the water immediately turns on right here with everything else. But then I can turn the noisy stuff on separate when I'm actually ready to cut because I'll be probably preparing the job for a minute. Um, and then I also have the, yeah, no, nope, that's it. And so yeah, the fan is really, really beefy, but um, Let's see what else we got here. The, the the rail on the side here next to the Z height adjustment, I had to file that down to keep it from cutting my hand, so I took a file to the edge of the rail. The, the bearing never travels that far, so I'm not worried about bunging that up a bit, so that helps me not get my hands cut off. Um, the, the honeycomb bed was not quite flat. I had to kind of shim pieces of plastic from up underneath to try to get it flat, you know, testing um, from corner to corner and then to the center that the distance for, of the nozzle to the so the honeycomb is, is consistent is important because if you want to etch that's a very critical distance um, so that's something to keep an eye out for um, and also the honeycomb is really difficult to remove since it's just screwed in place with those four uh, screws that aren't really designed to be removed uh, by the end user so um, I have yet to come up with a solution for that but I'm just sticking to the honeycomb for now even though I want to use the have the option to use the blades it's not a total deal breaker um, so yeah and then let's see the lid when it came in it was a little bent I had to bend that back into shape as you saw and it also didn't have like a soft close so I added some rubber gaskets essentially some just little strips of uh, uh, soft rubber to kind of rubbery foam to uh, soften the add the blow on all the doors and then while we're on the doors the locks I found to be a bit too cumbersome because I'm, I'm coming in and out of this thing constantly and have to go find the key and unlock it was kind of annoying so what I ultimately ended up doing is you'll see here as I close this is installing just sticking a magnet in there a little disc magnet square magnets on every door and then this is another magnet you think I actually have a handle to pull on um, and I found that that's saving me a lot of time from having to mess with the keys a lot. I drilled a hole in this one so I can just kind of pull on it. So yeah, magnets. I don't need to lock those. There's no children around here. Um, and let's see, what else do we got here? The faulty tube. Yeah, that's kind of a con. So that's a, you know, probably 200, 300, I'd say about 300 to $400 um, dig because the power supply is about 100 bucks and a, a, nice, a new 50 watt tube is about two, 300, I think. Um, so I didn't. I actually I ended up upgrading it to the to this EFR, which in total came up to about eight hundred dollars, about six hundred dollars for the tube. Um, so all in, I'm at about thirty seven hundred with everything. Uh, did I say thirty seven hundred? I meant twenty seven hundred. Twenty seven hundred. Um, the windows on this thing came in really foggy. I'm still planning on replacing them. I accidentally got the wrong size piece of scrap acrylic to do that with, so I'm still waiting on getting these swapped out. But I guess I'm kind of getting used to it, even though I shouldn't be. It's you know, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, what else do we got here? Uh, no interlock on the lid. So when you open the lid, the laser continues to fire as if uh, as if it's safe. And I find that to be kind of ridiculous. So I'm, I'm planning on adding a an inline, a wire and switch inline with the water protect on the laser. But at this, but yeah, I'm just going to trail off there and I won't. The power socket on the back here actually fried. 
this uh, IEC so so socket that was here. So this is one I installed that has a built-in EMI filter. I was going to install a separate EMI filter anyways, but this one's got a little one in it, which I don't know if it's actually rated properly, but it's got a built-in fuse. And um, But yeah, that other one was just arcing and sparking, so there was, some, there was a loose connection in there. Um, so I had to take a multi-tool and cut a square hole out to get that installed. Um, the other thing that bugged me was that there was no amp meter, AM meter, but I'll get to that in a second. I did end up installing one. Um, but yeah, so as far as uh, pros go, the Color Ruida controller has been uh, bulletproof. I really love that. It's got built-in memory. It's got USB, Ethernet as an option. Um, that's been awesome. I've f roughly confirmed that they are authentic Taiwan high win um, uh, linear bearings can we get a good shot in here so you can see the gold there we go the red and green so from what i was reading in a forum the way you can tell if they're authentic or not is if the rubber white if the wiper on the end the red piece is made out of a rubbery material instead of like a plastic and it is indeed soft so i'm going to just go with that because they don't seem to be of very low quality and it's not that taiwan high wind is like the highest end you know linear uh, motion you can get but it seems to be middle of the road uh, pretty decent so i'm totally okay with that um, overall build quality has been excellent. I love the doors. I love the, the sheet metal. There's, they didn't skimp on boxing things off. It doesn't, um, you know, there's different cavities and a lot of, lot of welds that they could have done without and cheaped out, but they didn't. So that's been awesome. Um, the wiring is really clean. There's disconnects. There's, you know, nice crimped connectors and, uh, and then there's also a grommets through all the sheet metal that the wires are passing through so they don't get, so the insulation doesn't get cut off accidentally. Uh, the electronics have a cooling fan. That's cool. Didn't need it. Didn't need that. It's probably not even necessary, but it's good to know. There's a physical, there's actually like a relay water, um, water protect, uh, unit in the back here. I don't know if you know, you won't be able to see it from here, but you can hear it click on when the machine comes on. So if the, if your water, if your pump isn't working, it won't let you fire the laser, which is excellent. Not the case on my full spectrum. Um, what else do we got here? The industrial hall effect sensors. These guys right here are super repeatable and they just look to be of decent quality and they've, um, you know, the whole homing process is really fast and accurate and I love it. Um, and that would be distinct as distinct from like rocker switches. Um, the blade and honeycomb options, even though they're tricky, are, are there, so that's a cool upgrade. Um, there's a, the disconnect for the rotary table. I may not use it, but it's nice to know that it's there as an option. What else do we got? The LED lighting, the pass-through for the materials, and the adjustable Z. So those are all bonuses. Now, and then it's, uh, So now I'm going to go through my list of uh, kind of upgrades that I did that you might want to consider. Uh, ones that, let's see if I didn't already go over them. Um, no, actually it looks like I pretty much did, went over everything already. So, um, I, I highly recommend the magnets. I had to cut my own, a new gauge block after I installed the new tube, so I just did this one and did a press fit magnet so it always stays with the machine. Same thing, tied a magnet to this rag, so I've always got an easy way to, to wipe the machine. Um, and I'm using a program called Light, uh, what's it called? Lightburn which I highly recommend. Check, go check out Lightburn, independent developer, actively developed, and the program is so much better than uh, what I've seen from uh, RD Works, and it's, um, and it's got a huge community behind it, so go check out uh, Lightburn. Um, but overall, I would say this has been uh, a worthy exercise. Lifting it up here was interesting, took three people and quite a bit of grunting, but now it's up, and it's cutting. I should probably have a video, shoot a video of it cutting, so I'll, hope, I'll cut that in here. Check for bubbles. That's a little. That'll be fine. Go ahead and switch on the uh, exhaust and such. 